Hey, Dad. Not much to report. The news said we were scaling back troops. Do you think you'll be able to come home for good soon? I miss you a lot, Sadie. I don't think you owe that man another day, much less another year, okay? You put your whole life on hold. You wanna walk me home? Why don't you like Cyrus? I think he's nice. Nice people don't break up families. Do you want to tell me what's going on with you, Sadie? Kids, Francis. Nobody cares what we do. Show your colors. Show your colors. Show your colors. I'm here at the Las Vegas Film Festival with Megan Griffiths and Lacey Levitt. And their film, Sadie, just played here at the Las Vegas Film Festival. Uh, if you could fill in the audience what your film's about. Oh, sure. Uh, so Sadie's about a young girl who lives at home with her mom while her dad's serving repeated tours of duty overseas. Sadie idolizes her dad and is excited for him to come home eventually, but he keeps re-upping and staying overseas while, and her mom has decided it's time to move on. And she starts seeing someone new, and Sadie decides she's going to be the soldier on the home front and come in between this new relationship at whatever means necessary. I like that. You had a really talented cast, Melanie Linsky's in this, and uh, John Gallagher Jr., who I love. Yeah, I love in him In Newsroom too. and Short Term 12. He's mm -hmm. great in all this. He does a lot of really good in indie stuff. What was it, the other one he did? He just did Miss Education of Cameron Post. That right, was and then he did another one a few years ago with about the heart. I don't remember which one it was oh. called. Oh, yes. I, I saw it. The name of it is right. escaping it's me, really too. Right, it's really good. Yeah. He's a fantastic actor. How did you get all those people in one room? Well, uh, Melanie was first, mm -hmm. um, and we uh, we met through an, uh, an introduction from Mark Duplass. Yes. Just a mutual okay. friend, and the, she was working yeah. with him at the time on Togetherness. And mm -hmm. she stayed attached for several years, and then we finally made it. And uh, we had a casting director named Amy Renee, Amy Renee who... Uh, you know, did all the sort of legwork of getting it out to all these great other actors, and Melanie's name is such a draw, and then... It really is. She's the queen of Mumblecore, and Mark Duplass is king of Mumblecore, <laughs> I think. Well, and also just, I mean, she's been working for, you know, 25 years, from yeah. everything from small indies to huge blockbuster films, and yeah. she's the kind of actor when other actors know she's in a film, they want to work with her. This, uh, and everything I see her in, she's usually good. She was in probably the only good Netflix original film. Uh, I don't want, <laughs> don't want to be in this world anymore. That's a great film. Yeah, she. I think she elevates everything she is in. Yeah, yeah, happy Christmas. Everything I've seen her mm -hmm. in, she's really good in. So that's really, when I saw her name on it, I was like, I gotta see that already. Yeah, yeah I think that's yeah. how the actress felt. They're like, yeah. I wanna be part of that yeah. if she's there. So. Yeah, and then, yeah. I, I, that was really, I guess that was really cool for you to have such a huge name in your film, right? I mean, I love those actors. Everyone mm -hmm. in the film, I'm mm -hmm. just a giant fan of, and so I was really happy to have them all, and they all just fit the roles. I was I was stoked about. My how favorite it came character together. was the old man. Yeah, the old guy's my favorite. Seattle actor named T. Denard. Yeah, he's been acting uh, since we were just talking about. He was in uh, Officer and a Gentleman. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it was one of his. I think may have been his first film role, and then wow. he's uh, he's you know gone in and out and done theater and stuff but we were thrilled to get him because he's like a dream he's, yeah. he's great in that yeah he's great in that so how much of it is scripted and how much did you go off the cuff with the thing like with a film like this pretty scripted Good. i mean it's a it was a, a project i worked on for many years and and you know the actors were really happy to kind of work off of the script but you know any any time something doesn't feel natural or normal coming out of somebody's mouth I always try to say like what how would you say it mm -hmm. and sometimes you know we, when you have great comedic improvisers like Tony Hale or yeah or say. our young actress Keith L. Williams yeah. uh, who was like an amazing uh you know just had amazing things to add to right. things that you just want to like give them the freedom to 
to play a little bit. Let's so. get that right. It's Emmy winning Tony Hill. I think he Emmy appreciated the introduction Hill. every single time you say his name, right? Is that kind of how that has to go? I don't know. Yeah, he's a real diva on set. Is he? He demanded yeah. us. We could make eye contact. We had yeah. to say Emmy award winning yeah. Tony Hill. Do you realize I've been beat? Yeah, no. we got it. Exactly. The sweetest guy ever. And, and Danielle man, Brooks, I like too. I mean, she's yeah, so fun and funny. She's effervescent and she just like. You have all these great TV actors and you made them in, you put them in this great movie. Yeah. Because I mean, Gallagher comes from Newsroom. Danielle comes from Orange is the It's New funny. Black, I know. I think of John as like short term 12 because that's where I saw him first. And then Same I think here. of Melanie from all these movies and everyone's like, she's this comedic TV actress. And I'm like, oh, right. I never watched that show. Me neither. But <laughs> I love her work. So I, I mean, yeah. we might have to do that. I know. I'll go yeah. back. Well, right, well, yeah. But television is so good now, too. It's like it, it really doesn't is. matter if you're on, a, you know, a Netflix series or, you know, HBO series. Obviously, HBO does the most amazing work ever. So it, they really do. Yeah. On an HBO show doesn't mean you're a small screen actor yeah. necessarily. No, I, I, they got Nicole Kidman. We're good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, it's, what's what was the hardest day on set for you? Like, um, I think probably this the day we shot the. There's a really intense. I don't want to spoil the movie, of but there's not. a really intense scene for our young actress who's amazing, mm-hmm. um, and it just was a. You know, we just were, all were really wanted to be really careful around it. You know, it. Was, I know where you're going. What you're talking yeah, about. It's, yeah, it's for those who haven't seen the movie. I don't want to be too cagey, but yeah, like, yeah. she's just like. She has to. She's put in a situation that's a little more mature than she's ready for, and uh, and it was just we just wanted to be delicate and protect her. She puts her. herself in a situation that she's, yeah. yeah. She's I she's incredible though. That she's she was fourteen about a month into her fourteenth year when we shot the film, and she's just sort of ahead of her time and by years in maturity, and yeah. and she just she was dominates that whole picture. Uh, she yeah. really does. I it's believe me, I, I agree. I just was, I I watched it the other night, and I was just. Still, after all, how, how many times I've seen right. the film, I was just watching the subtlety of her performance and thinking it's so crazy that that came out of a right. 14-year-old. She's like been, she hasn't even been on this decade, uh, two decades <laughs> on this earth yet. She's I know. She's pulling out stuff like that. So what was the best day on set for you? What was your favorite day? Uh, it's funny. I never thought about these questions. Um, That's what I, I'm here for. Yeah, you're just <laughs> making me think. Um, Hard-hitting questions. That's what I do. <laughs> um, Actually, it, randomly, there was a day that we shot a lot of stuff with mm-hmm. Melanie and John, mm-hmm. and for some reason, it, everything was just going great, and every, and they were just making me laugh, and we were just shooting all this stuff that was re- it was really lighthearted and fun. But I would say there was one, there was a scene in the film where John Gallagher Jr.'s character gets into his car, mm-hmm. and he's an ex-pilot, and um, he's kind of hating himself for all the bad choices he's made in his life that have taken him away from that path. And in the script, it says he gets into his car and a plane flies over and he kind of looks at the plane and reminisces. And then we assumed that we would have to do that as a visual effect. And then um, we got on set and the second take, an actual plane flew over, <laughs> lit up by the sun. That's totally awesome. see it in the reflection and his eye line is just right on. And it's just it's like this serendipitous moment that we none of us could believe that you can't you can't pull that if you want to that's, no it was we were just like what did that what happen it, and you know he couldn't see the sky yeah. so he like he just kind of took his own cue and looked up and it just all timed out that's and just it was an amazing actor doing yeah an actor thing. yeah pretty, he's great so we're gonna get more into you now who do you look at as like an inspiration for as a director and a writer of course um, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Lynn Ramsey, and I just watched her new movie, and it's, like, the best. Oh, yes. Um, oh, yes. Trust me. We Not only did we review the film, and it's our best-reviewed film of the year, but we broke down the deeper meanings of it. Oh, so yeah. So you guys can all check I'll that totally, out. I'll totally, yeah, I'll listen to that. That sounds great. I, I, I think she's a genius, and finally I feel like she's kind of getting the recognition she's deserved all along. You know, I think she, she kind of fell victim to that, like, you know, difficult female director thing that, yeah. like... You know. Well, we need to talk about Kevin should have put her on the map anyways because yeah. the thing's brilliant. It's a it's, brilliant film. I agree. Very, yeah. very scarring in, yeah. <laughs> in a great way. You can't rewatch it. <laughs> well, you were never really... That. Here's also one you can't really rewatch either. You're just like, I'm going to be scarred for life after this. Thanks, Joaquin. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. it's not Joaquin. It's her doing that to you. It's Lynn making that. Yeah. But yeah. like her... Yeah, so her ability to, uh, con- like to construct a story through visuals and through atmosphere and through tone. I just... I, I'm really in awe of how she approaches everything, and she, I, I just feel like she's a, she has a lot of integrity as an artist. I feel like there's a cadence-based analysis that she goes through, where it's just characters reacting without saying words, yeah. and I think that was very prevalent in your film as well. Oh, I think there was like I'll a take it. there were certain <laughs> scenes where, you know, John Gallagher's eyes would just do something, mm-hmm. and you would know something's going on in there, mm-hmm. or the, the flirtation specifically between all the characters there would there would be non 
said words, but they, they would be said with just looks, you know? That sort of thing. And I think that's what you're talking about. Yeah. And it's, it's there. You can see the inspiration there. Yeah, I, there's nothing I like more than watching actors do, you know, watching their faces and, mm -hmm. and seeing them have these small little moments of revelation and thought that you can just kind of perceive. A, a like film. a human person would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, from a produ production standpoint, you're the producer on the film. Uh, what's that, what's that got to be like working on a film like this with a, you know, very tight constraints very time you, you talked about it a little bit in the room but you could only work with the kids for so long you can only do this for so long you can only work in the daylight for so long you're in a trailer yeah. which is very small and space it was really really cold it was january it's seattle yeah it's seattle. really cold yeah it was freezing um yeah you know it, uh if you want to be comfortable in life i wouldn't suggest getting into independent film producing yeah um but uh no it's it you know making any film is hard and then making a film with very little money is even harder um, it's always an uphill battle, especially if you're trying to protect the creative integrity of the film and, you know, raise money to make a film a certain way as opposed to, you know, like for years we were told, like, maybe it'd be easier to finance this film if Sadie were a boy. And it's like, well, that's not the movie we're trying to make. Also, I don't think so. Also, yeah. I don't think so either. Yeah, I don't think the effect is, effect is there either. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we've seen a lot of amazing films over the years that explore what you know, a culture of violence does to boys, and that's really great, but, like, it's, it, it was I think, that's a really kind of the interesting point. thing for Megan to explore, like, what does this, you know, do to young girls. Yeah. That was one of the reasons why I fell in love with the script. But I also really like that it's, there's an absence of the father, and for once, on, in cinema, for so long in, in, in movies, we, we get this thing of, like, the father's not important. Mm. But to Sadie, that's her world. That's, mm. He's the most important mm -hmm. thing in her yeah, world. Yeah, she idolizes him. He needs yeah. it, yeah. but he's not there. Mm -hmm. yeah. he, does, he doesn't come off as a deadbeat, which is kind of the cliche. Mm -hmm. He comes off as just not there. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't think of, like, Cyrus calls him a deadbeat, but um, I, I always think of him as a person who just doesn't understand how to live his life outside of the military anymore. Mm -hmm. and, and so we don't really meet that character and get to explore him that much, but in my mind he's found himself in that environment it's a good commentary on that i don't know if he did that on purpose but it's a good commentary on how when one gets into that mil you know gets into the military into that mindset it's hard to come back home because mm -hmm. home is there yeah i think about that scene in um uh oh my god Catherine Bigelow's movie, Hurt Locker, oh, yeah, the Hurt Locker. Uh, yeah. where Jeremy Renner's character comes home and he's just like staring at the cereal in the cereal aisle, like yeah, like it just doesn't understand the way life works back home anymore. That's my favorite scene in the in that movie. That's a great scene. It's, it's my favorite scene. one. Yeah, and so it's I think about that as being like Sadie's dad would have that experience. Right. See, anytime I think home. of that movie, I don't think of him running away from the bomb. I think about that scene in, the, in the grocery store. It's <laughs> so brilliant. Yeah. And and I, and I like that you went there. All right, so let's have a little fun to end this. Okay. So. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I real quick? Yes. I was I was doing this like long like kind of like jokey like everything sucks about being an indie producer, but yeah. I was going to say yes. Please finish. At <laughs> the end of the day, producing for Megan is really actually fairly easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the financing stuff is of course hard, but you know, producing for a director like Megan is really easy because she's such an amazing director, and so many actors and crew want to work for her because she does such great work for them mm -hmm. and like sets such a great tone on set that that part of my job is really easy. <laughs> just want to make people Thanks, think no, that I wasn't no, just going to bitch about. How hard it was no. the whole time. <laughs> the assumption is it's difficult. I mean, it's difficult to make any movie, but, but one particularly with such a small budget. But, you know, yeah. at the end of the it's day, especially challenges. coming and sharing with people like you, it's mm -hmm. like it's incredibly rewarding. So. I'm, I'm I would do it again. I'm glad to hear Probably will. I'm glad to hear that. Years. Yeah. You know, sharing it with me is rewarding. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> uh, so just to have a little fun here. So let's uh, tell the people, where can they find this film and why should they watch it? Uh, okay, so it'll be available on Amazon at the end of February 2019. Oh, wow. um, we're getting a nice sneak preview then. So yeah, and then um, you sh I think people should watch. I mean, they'll, they'll, it'll be available in some cities theatrically and li likely on iTunes, leading into our Amazon release. But mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think people should watch this film because it has something to add to the cultural conversation around youth mm -hmm. and violence mm -hmm. and. Uh, and what we're teaching the youth in our society about how to solve their problems. We're, they're, we're giving them a nonstop uh, examples of people solving their problems with the use of guns and with the use of war and with the use of uh, other violent techniques. And uh, there's not a lot of consequences that, are, that we see people facing. Um, and I think it's really damaging and I'm really worried about where it's leading. And so uh, it's, it, this movie is trying to talk about our culpability as adults in informing these children and, and sort of their version of right and wrong and their version of problem solving. So I think it's something that everyone could 
stand to explore a little bit. I like that answer. Yeah. Do you have a, maybe a little bit more to add, or um, do you think she nailed that? Uh, she nailed it. She always nails it. Um, <laughs> but I do think, yeah, and I would just also say, as we talked about, the actors are so amazing. Um, and I, you know, to see people like Tony Hale, we all know him as so incredibly funny and hysterical. He's um, Buster, he's, yeah. He's Buster, and we all know and love him as Buster, but he, you know, he brought such a depth and humanity to, to this role, and it was so great to have him around, and all of the, all of the actors did. Um, and, you know, I'll just say, too, like, I think when Megan wrote this film eight years ago, it was incredibly um, powerful. And in the eight years and with what's been happening in our political climate, I mean, obviously, at this, this day and age, you can, you know, brag about sexual assault and still get elected president of the United States. And I think this is a very interesting film to watch in that context here and now. It became poignant. It, yeah, <laughs> it, it just became more poignant. I mean, you know, there I, I like was, that. there, yeah, there, it, it really has unfortunately matured in, a, in an interesting way like a fine wine um, but I'd also say yeah to, to follow us uh, it's uh, Sadie Film on Facebook and Twitter and Film Sadie on Instagram and of course I'm going to be tw- uh, putting that out uh, to the ether for all you folks who want to check it out um, the review will be up soon guys and of course we're going to put this lovely conversation with it excellent and I hope everybody will check out the film February 29th when it comes out but they'll read the review in like a week when I get time to actually awesome. get off my butt and do it thank you so much All right, I appreciate Pleasure. your time thank you so